Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy John, Carnage here today, bringing you guys another YouTube video. In this video, uh, first of all, I'm gonna be getting ready for this little trip I'm about to take out to Tennessee. I'm about to take a four, four hour drive, three and a half, four hour drive out to Jacksboro, Tennessee to go pick up an old Dodge van. Uh, this thing popped up on Marketplace last week and me and my friend both really liked the idea of going and picking up a project van and I thought it was gonna sell in like two seconds and the way my work schedule works out I didn't think I'd be able to buy this thing but I messaged the dude after it sat for a day and another few days went by and I told him what my plans were when I'd be able to come out there and uh, everything lined up to where today is Tuesday it's been a marketplace for like five days five six days or something and I'm about to drive out there to get it I mean, I really shouldn't be surprised. It's a piece of shit old van that doesn't run, no title, and it's full of junk and the interior is destroyed. But this thing's got to be a rare van. I mean, it's a miniature Winnebago RV on a B300 Dodge van. I think it's really fucking cool. But before I go pick that up, I got to put new plug wires on the Suburban because two of them have holes in it and I haven't fixed it. Uh, I hardly do any work on this truck. I bought it, uh, put a new head gasket on it, and I just driven it since. So I got to put plug wires in the truck, and then I'm gonna tidy up a few things on the trailer, get the spare and jack and a bunch of other stuff in the uh, truck, and that'll be on the road. I froze up like I was rolling up to white lines Damn, she's so fine, I never made a mind Every time I could have had her, I was doing time I'm out now, but now I got a place older Cold part of and she told me that she knows I tried to say it's over, but she ain't get the message She ain't why my girl called, but I just don't accept it Girl, you know you sexy Look, here go my number, don't call it, just text it She replied with hers at the very next second Yes, it's going down, and if it does, best believe I got protection. I stole her number with another name, so if my girlfriend trips, she'll be tripping on some other lane. About an hour away, stopping at a gas station for a couple things. Oh no, my temp gun's dead. I think it needs oil. Suburban has been running. This is the longest trip I've taken it on already. It's been on the road. I don't know, it's probably driven near 200 miles just running around. It's running good. Gonna fill her up with gas. Put gas in it this morning, but I didn't fill it up. Get gas and then be back on the way there, about an hour away. Just might splurge a little fornication. You know that I hurt the middle. Damn girl, we gon' have to take a time out. Too much communication, you gon' have my girl find out. And drama is the last thing that I really need. And she don't ever give me space, I can barely breathe. And there every time is. I tell a ghost, she don't wanna leave. Dude, we're getting it from super cool. He has no money into this thing. You want a Camaro? Old man said, You want the Camaro? You're taking this with it. Super freaking cool, man. Old Dodge B300. Window goes up and down. 318. It's a 74 model. It's probably gonna need new floors. The seat's falling back. Has the original upholstery in it. Has a sink and a stove in the back factory. Needs uh, all kinds of work, but oh, man, check this thing out. <laughs> Some original paperwork in it too. Apparently it hasn't been rolled over 37,000 miles. When they loaded this thing up, they used a tractor and they picked it up and bent it, supposedly, so. Can't really get in the back, there's a fridge. 
a mini Winnebago. Most of the wood paneling on the sides is still intact. Got no fan. Apparently, or unfortunately, it's missing this whole quarter panel and one of the hubcaps. But here it is in all its glory. Gotta pay for this thing and uh, get it back home. I guess this is where you fill up the oil at. Alternator. I guess it's probably AC compressors, two lines to it. Little radiator, some different terminals. Oh, there's the prop right here in front of the radiator. Oh, this thing's so cool. It's got a fiberglass hood on it. That's uh, an interesting thing. Apparently these things have a uh, pretty unique front end. Unique to these and the other B. 300 vans are different. Oh, weenie wagon. It's missing one of the tow mirrors too, which sucks, but same thing with the the rear quarter and hub cap, but you're gonna have to make something work. It's already need the, needs the rest of the work. Don't know about this, what material this is. Got all the cab lights, pop top. We can't really get in it much right now. It's 12.15 p.m. I admit defeat and I'm sitting here in a hotel. We picked up the van probably around 5 o'clock. And the trailer is not capable of taking that van home. I completely underestimated the size of that thing. I mean, it's a one-ton fucking B300 van uh, that weighs like 8,000 pounds. I could hardly get him on the trailer. I had to have two trucks pull the van onto the trailer and before that it was just a mess it was sliding around we had to jack it up get it back on the trailer it was a nightmare but we got it on there and I already knew this trailer wasn't well equipped uh, for this but I was hoping more tongue weight would help it out but it's just too unstable so we sat around for a while trying to figure out our options and uh, probably gonna end up selling my trailer that I have because it's really just not worth much if I can't do what I need to do with it and uh, so we're gonna sell it tomorrow and I'm gonna try to get the van hauled back to the house I admit defeat the van is fucking awesome but defeat and I would be sleeping in the Suburban but the Suburban is loaded down with like seven fucking tires because I already knew the tires weren't good on the vehicle either but I decided to take it out here on a fun road trip. So I got spares on spares on fucking spares. So it's been two and a half weeks since we got the wiener wagon. And in the last two, two and a half weeks, we've done a lot of research on this thing. First and foremost being that we found out that there were only 500 of these wiener wagons made, which is crazy. I had no idea that this thing was so rare. I went out there and bought this thing just because I thought it looked awesome. And I looked at pictures and videos and it actually said that there were supposedly only 500 of these made in a video of one of these that has been restored which is the only one that's properly been restored and like documented online is this YouTube video here and it says that in the description that there was only 500 made and apparently it said that on an article as well that I never read until the Thursday after we got back when she told me that there was only 500 of these made apparently I've only found eight other ones online and that's spanning from a fully restored one to um, a listing on Craigslist with no pictures that just said Winnie Wagon. So I assume one was posted on Craigslist and sold years ago. We tracked down a dealer sales brochure 
in mint condition. We got it for $9 on eBay, shipped. We also found a B series, a 1975 release or edition publication. I don't know the right word. Um, a B series van chassis uh, repair manual. We got that for $15 shipped on eBay, a full service manual for these vans. Now we're hunting a Winnebago Winnie Wagon original manual, which there's a shot of it. I don't even know what's in it, but there's a shot of it at the beginning of that YouTube video. So we're hunting one of those, trying to hunt down some owners. We're gonna be making some phone calls this week. There's a video on Facebook of one of these things getting stripped. And I reached out to them on Facebook, but it's like a business and they never hit me back. So I'm gonna call the number, hopefully get in contact with somebody. Um, I'm getting deep in this thing. We're pretty much gonna do a full resto on this. And it's been a while and today is the day we're gonna start cleaning this out. Um, some of the first things that we saw is an old natural ice beer can. I don't know how old this is. An old phone. There's a cute old teapot over here that she wants. Um, the Buick emblem, which was probably for a van or a trunk. I really don't know what this was for. And the fucking danger tube. There's a tube of like adhesive. We're like, what is that? It, it just says danger on the top. It doesn't say what it is. And then it has a warning on the back. So we got the tube of death. Uh, we also brought the weenie wasps. We brought some red wasps all the way from Tennessee and they stayed in this thing and they are currently uh, inhabited in this. So we're gonna have to get rid of those. The sink and everything in the back, the appliances, this uh, pull out bed couch. And then this is a table and two seats. In the sales brochure, they have all the factory options, 360, uh, V8, chrome bumpers, chrome hubcaps, trailer hitch, uh, portable toilet, a few other cool things, which there is PDFs of the sales brochure, but not of the manual at all anywhere online. So we're pretty much just cleaning this thing out, uh, at least the interior mostly, so we can actually get in here. The door still doesn't open all the way because of the hitch, probably gonna have to cut it off and maybe put a new receiver on it someday, but I don't know what the future of this project will entail because this is going to be a full resto job. There's the pop top, which spans the entire way of the back of the van from the cab back, but that's going to need to be completely redone. We will probably open that today or try to open that today. We have not messed with it at all because I wanted to record all of it and save it. Uh, we just threw the cushions out the window and we're going to continue to get this wood and junk out of here. So this pulls out. As you can see, there's two legs on either end that pulls this out. There's a dead lizard in here, bro, in the sink. Look at him. What the fuck, man? Is it like one of the blue-tailed ones? I think but it has a black tail. It looks, from here, it looks pretty well-preserved. That is well-preserved. I think it's sitting in the sink. Yeah, the li Winnie Lizard. The Winnie Lizard. The Winnie Lizard. <laughs> the this whole body is made of a, they actually said it in the sales brochure, it's made of a ACP, ACR? I can't remember, but it's like acrylic, something fiberglass. It's pretty much fiberglass and plastic and wood. I guess which most RVs are made of stuff like this. So it's gonna need, again, full resto if we want it to not leak and look any good. Uh, curtain rods. Oh, and they're rusted through, but <laughs> numbers matching curtain rods. There's a seatbelt right here. Oh. It still clicks. You hear that? This thing's probably never been used. OEM, brand new factory. Worth money right here. There's a new curtain rod in the packaging right here. Gold and white. What? This is just crazy, man. Like, what is this worth? For a, a, a 74 Winnebago brand new, new old stock curtain rod. That's fucking cool, man. Is this a, oh, this is probably part of the, uh, the headliner. There's a light on it. Dude, look at the light. Did you see it? Do you press it? No. Dude, they had so much fucking ice cream in this bitch. There's like, I'd say 15 one gallon things of ice cream. Like there's lids. Maybe they reused the containers for something. I think we'll just take the base off and solo cup 
company. I've never actually seen solo cups. Solo. Mark of quality. That's pretty cool. I've never actually seen solo cup brand. Let me grab these two. These are just cool, man. Look how bright they are. And they're oh. and they're cream from oxidization. <laughs> love it. Fucking love it. We got jars. Suburb, suburban. Whoa, honey. Kroger. Quality guaranteed. What's Kroger? Is that a grocery store? Yeah, it's a grocery store. Sea Rock City. Is Rock City, Tennessee? I wonder. Look at this. There's these adorable little cups. <laughs> Here's an old lemon juice thing. It still has juice in it. I wonder what it smells like. It smells like nothing. But there's probably a... Oh, it's still sealed. <laughs> what? This is sealed. I'm trying to get all the uh, cool stuff out of Hardee's. We got Hardee's cups. Williamsburg Pottery Factory, 1991. Our guess is that this thing was off of the road, 92 to 95, because we actually found paperwork in it that I might show a clip of. It was Graham, Graham Tire Company, and it had service done to it. Like, uh, I can't remember what was done to it. it. Tires, it got four new tires and some other stuff. And when we looked up Graham Tire Company, there's only two locations and they're both up north. One of them was in North Dakota and the other one was like Wyoming or Iowa, I can't remember, but they were up north. So this thing was definitely on the road in 92 and we didn't find any records after that. So it was probably parked mid nineties and has been sitting 20 years, 25 years, 30 years. Well, 93 would be 30, so. Another jar. This, another umbrella. There's definitely a couple, definitely a couple owned this. Cause there's a tan and a purple umbrella. Forgot about this boy. Oh my gosh, dude, this thing was definitely up north. They got an ice scraper. Well, maybe it got colder, global warming. Maybe it used to snow more in Tennessee than it does now here in North Carolina. We haven't had snow in like four years. There's a paper in the box. Uh, a thrilling experience. See Niagara Falls from the maid. There's a pack of cigarettes. G-Tone. Light 100s. Alright, I think it's time to try to pop this pop top. We got most of the trash out. Well, besides this wood here. Um, there's a few more, but I'm gonna try to pop this up now. Oh my god, that worked effortlessly. I know, but... I don't want to break anything. I hope the wasps aren't getting mad. Uh, the wasps. Uh, it's in the back somewhere. Is it supposed to come out up here? It's supposed to be a really soft vinyl or like leather. And it is, it's dried so much. It's like dried in the way we had it been sitting for 30 years. It's so dry and hard. It's supposed to be really soft and pliable. Let's try to loosen it up. Get down. Oh, we're breaking something. You think we're missing a lock here? Yeah, I think there's supposed to be something there. That winds it? Yeah. Cause look, it's just a chain gear. Got a little bit more wood that I'm going to clean out and pretty much going to call it a night. I need to figure out where I'm going to put all the good stuff. Uh, maybe organize my shed and my storage a little bit more. Going to get this wood out of here. There's a latch on this table. Piece of wood behind the chair. I don't know what that was for. It's a latch though. I guess put it in the suburban. Fire extinguisher. That is, yep, that is what that's for. Oh my god, the original jack's in here. Sick, and the handle's in here too. And another wrench. We got the handle for the pop top. Somewhere. Another handle and a 
latch. All right, we'll come back in here later. My big thing before I start tearing out all this other wood is trying to get the measurements and because we're going to try to keep it pretty much original. This would have been a seat right here behind the passenger seat. This would have been a seat, storage up under it. I guess the seats could have folded forward. Table would have been able to move that. I, I just want to get measurements of everything and a layout. Maybe the blueprints would be in the Winnie Wagon manual. Um, we can only hope. I don't know if that is true or not, but preservation. So the other day, all the footage got corrupted of cleaning out the closet or wardrobe in the Winnie Wagon. And I have everything stored down here with all the cushions that I cleaned off. They're maroon with white pinstripes, which is pretty cool. They do unzip so you can clean them. Uh, I got a big box down here of all the cute little goodies we found and all the old stuff in there, which I'll pull out and show you. So we presume some older people owned this vehicle back in the day, um, an older couple. We found some golf shoes, I think, clogs, golf shoes. Old paper towels, some old silverware, here's a cool little knife, a Lipton tea mix jar with some more silverware and stuff in it. Just cool little things that I think is cool anyway. Um, old fire starters, extra curtain holders two game chips with American Eagles on them or bald eagles or I don't, I don't really know what that is but I think that's the same thing as on a quarter which is pretty cool and all this is inside of a thermos brand double six packer cooler which is pretty damn cool some pots and pans cups tea kettle some of the other things that you've already seen in the video some old beer cans everything in here leads to 80s 90s except for that one pack of gt1 cigarettes that i found i did some research on those cigarettes and those actually launched in the year 2000 which isn't exactly an indicator that this was on the road in 2000 but that's the newest thing that was in here is an old pack of cigarettes Big moment, big moment. You need to walk up in here and stand. 21 and a half. So is that 21 and a half by 36 and a half? Mm -hmm. 74. I said 74 by 27. 29 by 65 and a half. Closest thing I have is a 33. It kind of fits on there. I think I'm gonna pull the plugs and put some oil in the cylinders. 
Cause I don't think it can hurt anything. I'm about to pull plug number six out of eight and I think it's time I vacuum up some of this junk on top of this engine because I don't want any more rust falling into the cylinders from when I pull those plugs. So I turned it like a little bit. I turned it like just a little bit and then it was like really tough. I was like, let's go put oil in it. <sighs> turned it over a couple full times. It turns nicely. Now it's time to put a battery in it. I didn't do anything different. Noticeably different. Mmm, it was in neutral, not park, or it was in reverse, not park. We about to hear some noise, man. <laughs> I think. Let me go get the carb cleaner. I want to move. Is it still that back wheel? Definitely could be the wheel. Let's hear it again. I'd say it sounds pretty good. Yeah, it doesn't sound too bad. Just keep hammering on it. Fossils. Was that like a second guess? I'd say a second guess. All right, so the engine does make noise. The rear wheel is still locked up, so when I put it in gear, it didn't do anything. It was banging on the car, but it was acting like it wanted to start taking gas through the bowl. But starter's dead. So, progress. Because I'd love to use this engine. It's just less work we need to do. It's low miles. It couldn't be that bad. It really just comes down to how bad it leaks and gas mileage. Today, I'm going to try to free up this rear wheel. When we were putting it on the trailer in Tennessee, this wheel was locked up. So, this parking brake is pulled out of the back plate where the bracket is and that tells me this thing's pretty fucking tight right now it's already missing the grommet for the back plate to get to the adjuster so it's probably not a bad idea to get a screwdriver and try to loosen up this shoe so the current uh plan of events for winnie wagon is i need to get it to move because Supra is making considerable progress and that is being blocked in by this hunk of shit. A little bit ago I tried to free up the rear wheel that's locked up. That drum is rusted solid uh, somewhere within the axle and brake system. Uh, I don't think this one was locked up, but today I'm going to take the fuel line off, hook up a boat tank and maybe an external fuel pump and try to get this thing to run. Going to remove the line right below the pump put some different line on it and we'll see if this pumps any good this is what we're working with and now I'm gonna connect this line to the boat tank under the hood batteries hooked up fuel tank is connected Let's see what it do Mm-hmm. 
Winnie Wagon is idling, making some noise. Yes, sir. She is smoking. Cleaning out all that oil I dumped in the cylinders. So a couple weeks ago, I was previously stuck with trying to get these wedges out of the axle studs or whatever. I'm still learning about this. Came out here, gave them a good whack, and these came out. So now, we're gonna play with this. I wish I had some gloves. I do have gloves, but I'll get my hands nice and smelly like a real man. So I've discovered that this is a Dana 60 rear end, and they got rid of the cone uh, seals or washers or whatever around the axle there a few years later um i honestly wish it was a dana 70 because it's more heavy duty and you know more sought after apparently but this has a two and three eighths axle nut right there there's an inner and an outer nut so now i need to go find a big fucking socket much later this measured a two and three eighths inch nut on this axle and i ordered a two and three eighth inch went and got it a few days later and it didn't fit it's a two and three eighths uh diameter but a rounded socket two and three eighths rounded socket does not fit so it's a two and a half inch rounded socket here so we're gonna make some more progress tonight i gotta bend these tabs back there we go wasn't on there tight but had to get this socket. This one was like 17. The other one I ordered was like 16. So I'm slowly building a big socket collection. Now the wheel bearing should come out. I should probably be able to pull the drum off at this point, but that's our problem. All right, this other side is acting a little free. That's exciting. I want to take the shoes with it. Come on, it's moving, kinda. Uh, well, there's part of the drum gone. Is it that bad? I could probably get a flat, like a nut cover for the end of this axle, like a plumbing cover. Put an axle or a drum puller on it and pull it off. But if I can go without that, I'd like to, or just put a piece of wood in there, really. So O'Reilly's AutoZone and Advance do not rent brake drum pullers. I was gonna call Napa, but it's a weekend or it's a Saturday and they don't, uh, they're not open. So I'm between cutting this and buying a new one, which I really, I don't know. I'm between doing that and I don't, I don't know, waiting, being patient. Over the last couple days, I've thought about my options. And it's either cut the drum or remove hardware to the back plate and on some of the newer or older model newer model dana 60s i don't really know but i know that they changed the mounting hardware to the back plate to the axle a little bit some of them have ovals on the back plate for the stud on the back side uh, this one just has circles i tried to dremel those out or maybe cut them but they're really tight and, and it'd be hard to do but then i noticed that the main pin that holds on the cylinder on the back plate had a bolt on it so i removed that bolt just now and then maybe some more hardware will come out with it <clears throat> it's wishful thinking if i can remove the back plate hardware and it should all slide off as one. Now, I don't want to cut the drum yet because I want this thing to move this week. And if I don't have a drum, I can't put a wheel on it and move it. <sighs> I'm about to just tie the Suburban to it and rip this motherfucker off the axle. If I'm smooth enough, I can remove one of the mounting nails uh, to the back plate with some pliers. Oh, one of the shoes came free. Hey, yo. Oh my gosh, it's coming off. It's coming off. Oh my God, hallelujah. Unfortunately, the clip that we broke was this top bracket that attaches right here behind the primary nail in front of it. 
right here to the parking brake lever and I guess secures it to the shoes. Everything in here is so washed. Look at this. I'm gonna take some pictures, disassemble all of this, and then throw the axle and everything back together and we'll deal with this later. I've got the fuel line routed into the cab. Time for a battery. It slammed it in reverse. It's moving. it did move uh, the transmission and gears are okay I probably didn't shift past first gear uh, coming back down the driveway I actually looked at the gauges and it is overheating it definitely is it has a bad valve cover leak and the gauge said it was overheating and when we turned it off it was steaming from the intake or the water neck on the intake this tire completely came off of the rim and we're kind of riding on the rim here, but I got to move this thing back to its resting place. And the headlights were not coming on when we turned them on. I'm not sure what that's about, but very little stuff. I just wanted to see if it moves and it's cool to be able to say that it moved and now it can move around the property freely. So these 16 and a half inch tires are most definitely all flat and off the rim that were originally on the Winnie Wagon. And I did a little research, did some talking in a Facebook group, and I wanted to get away from the 16 and a half because they're beadless. They're a little more expensive for a 10 ply, and they're just harder to come by. But I wanted a rim that I could fit the original hubcaps on because I think these hubcaps are really cool. Even though I'm missing one of them, I really like these hubcaps. And getting an aftermarket wheel, you probably wouldn't be able to fit hubcaps. But they moved away from the 16 and a half to a standard 16 inch tire on the later Dodge vans. So last night I went to the scrapyard and I pulled some rims off of a 97B3500 and they take 16 inch tires. These are 245.75s and they hold the hubcaps. So I think I came out on top. I paid $20 a piece for them. They're a little rough. But they have tires that hold air, which is perfect for moving it around the property for now before I buy new tires. And I'm going to clean these up and wire wheel them and paint them white eventually. But that is awesome. I'm very happy about that. I've got three vehicles on this property with no brakes. And after moving the boat with the truck, it is a luxury to have brakes. <laughs> anything out this thing you're driving a big old box man I guess I hit the body. Yep, we fucked up this corner. Oh no, shattered that tail light. Oh no, this whole corner is shattered, bro. I'm not too upset about this because I got to remake this whole quarter panel down here. And this whole body's coming off. And I'm doing a full body restoration on it. So I'm not too torn about this, but. 
It is pretty unfortunate. Poor Winnie wagon. All right, so I gotta do a three-point turn. I tried to put it in park, but I slipped. I, was, I saw, like behind me, I saw the tree. And then I tried to put it in gear. We are clearing the tree. Oh, I dent the bumper. I really fucked up that. That's why it's in so far. I bent the bumper in. At least I have one good side. Let's not fuck up this side. I need a side for reference. Man, that was neutral, not park. Is my rear end okay? I just drove right over something. It looks like it didn't even touch though. I just scraped the drive shaft a little bit. This is a good place for it. Yeah, that thing's not moving. This is where it's sitting. Till I come back to it, put brakes on it, and I start stripping the body. In this video, we picked up the Winnie wagon, admired it some, put some wheels on it, got it rolling and running. Fucked it up a little bit because I got no brakes. And really, it was my stupidity of doing that. But we've made a little bit of progress with this thing. I have big plans for this project. I want to do a full resto mod on it. I'm gonna have to take that bumper, pull it out, and before I start taking any of the body panels off, I want to put some light fiberglass sheeting and uh, some resin, do some light work before I pull it off so I can keep the original shape, which that's probably where the next part to this um, project will start is by stripping the body off and doing some body work. I want to get all the metal off. I want to reuse the original metal. This is my plan as of right now. I reuse the original metal for the siding. The front and back fiberglass, I want to reinforce it all um, with a few coats of fiberglass cloth or mesh. Um, do a full repaint. Put some chrome on these old bumpers. Maybe re-chrome the front, maybe paint it white. Lots of little stuff. And then the interior, there's a lot of work to be done. But whenever I get the body off, I'll do some framework, brakes, suspension. Pretty much a full restoration of this thing. And um, probably while the bed's off, might try to tune it up and everything and figure out if the engine and transmission is worth keeping in this van. But that's where I'm gonna finish off this episode. It's uh, pretty much December now, and I got this thing back in August, I believe. It's gonna be slow progress and a long project, but it will come together in time. Um, same thing with the Supra, that video, uh, part two to the Supra will be out within the next few months as well. I'm making progress on that. Both of these vehicles moved. Had a lot of fun making this video. Hopefully some people got some enjoyment out of it. And at the very least, I'm documenting the Winnie Wagon. Again, there's not a lot of information out there on Winnie Wagons. And uh, it's just so fucking cool. It deserves every bit of work I can give it. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Deuces.